what we started to see in August was the uh, contagion effects of the uh, of the issues in Europe and the United States. And so uh, for emerging markets, debt, for example, the bond yields uh, in the spread increased some 70 basis points, about three quarters of a percentage point. The equity markets, the stock markets took hits as the developed countries did. The developing countries have already been uh, suffering through the slow exports uh, to the developed world. And the issue that I suggested we have to watch closely is the domestic demand in emerging markets, so their consumer confidence, the business investment, if that also starts to get influenced like developed countries do, then we'll lose what's really been the bright spot in the world economy, the emerging markets, which have represented about a half of global growth. And the IMF is actually interesting because whilst it's talking about the West falling back, possibly going back into recession, if political indecision continues, also talking about the emerging markets and them potentially overheating, uh, going the opposite way. But that's as damaging, isn't it, if it goes on? That was the, really the issue that uh, was in the forefront of people's concerns um, through, uh, through August, because the emerging markets have come back very well. They've been a good source of growth, but the risk was overheating. Now the developing country policymakers have to walk a very fine line because we still see, for example, high food prices, and that affects a lot of their inflation indices because food is a, is a more important, a larger component of the, the household purchasing. But at the same time, they may be seeing the ripple effects that I mentioned in terms of the fall off of demand.